I'm really excited just to hear from yourself, the business side of dentistry and what's worked for you, what's been effective. I didn't do really well with associateships. I, I kind of, I've always wanted to be an owner and kind of work towards myself. And I figured, you know, the way I looked at it is if I made as much as an associate, but also owned my own for the time being, I don't care. I'll do it because I'm yeah. building I'm building equity. I'm building something for myself. When I first got into the office, I had to do a lot of cleanup. I had a lot of staffing issues. I kind of had to redo the staff and change the culture completely. Uh, there wasn't anything personable about the practice. And that's something I brought to the table. Once you realize, okay, there's a problem or an opportunity. Yeah. How did you approach it to like shift? That's yeah. the like problem, right? The culture. So what did you do to fix it? The, the biggest thing to shift the, the culture is the staff. You have to have the right people uh, that are working with you that have that exciting personality that want to work with the practice. You know, I tell a lot of people, when you come to work, you got to think that this business here, this is what feeds your family, feeds my family and feeds everybody, you know, that works here. Once you kind of get that in the people and, and then they start to see, okay, you know what, the doctor actually really cares about this business and, and cares about his patients, then they also start to care themselves. I'd have monthly meetings and then morning huddles and things that we discuss. And I would train my staff to kind of, okay, how do we speak to patients? What are we going to say to patients when they first come in? How are we going to treat patients when they first come out? We're in a service business because, you know, you have a lot of dental offices around you. I mean, there's no shortage of dentists. What is it that we can do that can make the patient feel comfortable? So we started by doing a lot of internal marketing. I I would do a monthly giveaway. We made it very nonchalant. As they're leaving, if we hear that the patient said, oh my God, the doctor was amazing. You guys are amazing. We would say, hey, you can leave a review and we'll put your name in a drawing and you might get a prize at the end of the month. They'll be like, oh, great. I love it. Also having the right people on your team from a marketing perspective. You know, when I switched to you, I remember telling you, hey, look, I'm getting a lot more traffic to my website. It's showing up more. My Google account, now I'm seeing more. And you have to be yeah. so consistent to the point where you're constantly doing it and you're constantly telling your staff because it doesn't, the habit doesn't pick up for a while. And then it becomes like autopilot. In the beginning, I was constantly on my staff. I never come to the staff and say, well, you did this wrong, wrong, and wrong. You know, I would just say, hey, you're doing amazing, but here's some little things that we can work on. And we get that traffic to the website. Now people are looking on Google, looking at your reviews. They're seeing all your reviews. You know how many times I've had patients come to my office and say, your reviews and, and your website and everything were, you know, you guys were on the top and I wanted to come and try you out. I talk and I speak and a lot of times I'm telling like, here's the formula for success. It's a three-part formula. Part one is internal marketing. Part two is showcase what makes your practice different with the website, personalize it, your reviews. And then part three is the marketing. That combination of things working together that has been successful for dental practices that I've seen and experienced. Tried everything from doing the flyers, from doing, you know what? It Honestly, it comes down to internal marketing and Google. Those have been the best kind of marketing that it, that I've used is getting the patients in your practice to kind of work with you and Google ad and everything to do with Google. That's why, you know, when we set up Northville, the, the new practice, first thing I did was give you a call and get, get that process generating again. Yeah. Cause you understand the process of what's worked for you and, and building it up. A really important part of marketing and the patient success is the front desk and those phones. You know, when you bought your, your first practice and now you're in your second, were there any, you know, obstacles that you saw kind of with that? Like the phone, the front desk, and how were you able to overcome it? What was successful for you? I like to personally uh, listen to some phone calls. And it's not like, a, like, hey, I'm, I'm spying on you kind of thing. It's just to kind of listen to what's going on, what verbiage yeah. is being used. So at my old office, I would do that frequently in the, in the beginning where I would listen to some of the phone calls. Then I would talk to the front desk and I would say, hey, you know what? Rather than us saying that this or telling the patient that we don't have this, you tell them something else. And let's try this verbiage. And if you have a good front desk that is willing to take criticism and willing to kind of 
work and they want to do the best, they will kind of pick up on things. There's just different wording that you can use that can help the patient kind of break out of that mental bubble of thinking, you know, and then help them get that treatment and be able to get them to sign up and do the things for their health benefit. Has there, you know, been anything that you found to help increase acceptance rates? When I got Northville, actually, they were still using film and they were still using charts. So the first thing that I did was kind of go chartless, put computers and all the the ops, also go digital and x-rays. Digital x-rays are very important to me. So that way- digital x-rays important? Because I love to show patients what they're getting done, why I'm deciding to do the treatment. If I don't do digital, I'm showing them on film. They're not going to know what the heck I'm talking about. With this, I can take a digital x-ray, put it right in the TV in front of them and go word for word. And I kind of explain the process and I have different analogies for everything that I do. By the time the patient is out of the chair, usually they're very confident and they know exactly what they're getting done. When people understand what's going on and they understand the severity of it, then I think you have much higher acceptance.